ladies and gentlemen, please welcome NetSuite founder, chairman, and CTO, Evan Goldberg. Not, not, nothing to see here, nothing to see here. Oh, I guess I'll take my apron off. Not gonna be cooking meth for any more of this presentation. Is my caller okay? Honey, looks good? All right, great, thanks, okay. Welcome everybody to the second day of Sweet World uh, 2014. What a difference a year makes. Last year I was a superhero. This year I'm cooking meth. Um, first thing I want to make clear, we know that the atomic symbol for gold is, geo, is not geo, um, but we didn't think breaking Aoud was that funny. <laughs> Chemistry joke? Anybody else, did you get it? No, you don't get it. Um, okay, tomorrow's business system today. So this title basically has nothing to do with my keynote. Um, they asked us for the title six months ago. Um, after making this video, we wanted to call it how NetSuite is like an addictive drug, but uh, Minnie said that the guides had already been printed. Uh, so let's move on. Okay. Oh, yes, cautionary note, forward-looking statements. Walter White never showed this slide in his customer presentations. Okay, what do we have here? Oh, yeah, this is a chart of the quality of my keynotes over the years. And as you can see, 2014 is going to be the best ever. So that's good news. Um, actually, it's a uh, chart of our headcount growth in the product team, and we've been investing NetSuite's success back into the product, so much so that this presentation is going to end at 5 p.m. So I hope you're all settled in for a long stay. We um, are investing across the globe. Actually, we do know that the world is round, and we've chosen our key centers uh, to be as uh, impractical as possible for meetings. Uh, but nevertheless, we have managed, as hopefully you'll see today, we've managed to cobble through. So we're investing in all areas of the suite. Um, long time areas like ERP and CRM and new areas like point of sale, HCM, mobile. Um, but beyond that, that's, you know, you can see on the left all the horizontal areas we're investing in. Um, we have to look across geographies. We have to look across uh, different industries. So the bottom line of, about this slide is you should feel bad for me because I have to go to a lot of meetings. We're investing in the enhancements that you want most. Um, we really thrive on the feedback that you give us. And every release, we're knocking down more of the customer requested enhancements at the top of the list. So please use sweet ideas, give us feedback, you know, participate in customer roundtables. All this, that helps us uh, build the right thing to make you successful. So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, data center operations. Uh, my group is responsible not just for building the system, implementing the system, designing the system, but actually delivering the system to you. And we have an amazing team that makes sure that NetSuite is, is reliable uh, and, and secure and fast. And um, as you can see here, this sort of exponential graph of user count, um, I have a message from the ops team. Please stop working so hard. Seriously, you're customizing all over the place. You're expanding NetSuite to, to new uses. I mean, seriously, take a vacation, okay? Success is overrated. Okay, that's, that's their message. But no, I think it's, it's really gratifying to see what people are doing with NetSuite. Um, we have 90 billion applic application requests now per year. That's 3,000 per second. And to handle all this volume, um, we're investing in the data center. We've increased, this is a graph, uh, we've increased the CPU cores over 50% uh, since last year. So, um, you know, really do keep working hard, keep using NetSuite, and we'll make sure that uh, we run NetSuite with the same level of reliability that we've had over many years. So, in talking about the different areas that we're investing in here in the NetSuite uh, product team, I, I thought I would uh, take a cue from um, the, uh, what we have on the website about why to use NetSuite. So these are the, if you go to the NetSuite website, the marketing website, this is what it says, the four reasons that NetSuite is the best solution for you. It's designed for modern company, business intelligence for all, flexibility is built in, and commerce-ready ERP. Now, 
it turns out our marketing is actually accurate. This is what we work on. So these are the things we're going to talk about today. And we're going to start um, with uh, design for a modern company. And users in a modern company expect an application that is intuitive, easy to use, mobile, fast, and scalable. So the first thing I want to talk about is making NetSuite more intuitive and easy to use. In particular, I want to talk about the new user interface. This is sort of the worst kept uh, secret at NetSuite. So uh, we can take a look at the new user interface. And in fact, uh, this is running live. Last two Suite Worlds, I've showed you some prototypes. This is running live in a NetSuite account, and it's going to be coming to your NetSuite account soon. So let's go ahead and take a look. So the first thing we've done is we've revamped the look and feel of NetSuite with modern fonts and uh, modern look and feel. We've revamped the menus. We've revamped the header. Uh, and you can see that we can um, automatic, we, can, we have a new menu that lets you create new records uh, right from the menu everywhere. Here's one of the coolest things. The, the header is now fixed. So as you scroll through the page, you have access uh, to all those tools at the top of the page. Um, it's oh, good, okay, you like that? Yeah, that's helpful, it's helpful. On a day-to-day -day basis, that's really, that, that's really helpful. You add up all the time you save there and it's like a month of your life. Uh, so uh, you can still drag and drop uh, portlets as you could before. We've uh, kind of improved the interactivity. Uh, here's a kind of cool thing. We use, personalizing the dashboard is a lot easier now. There's a panel that comes up, shows you what portlets you have available. You can drag and drop the portlet directly in place. Um, a lot of what you'll see now is progressive disclosure. As you roll over portlets, you'll see that you get menus, for example, to hide the portlet. So we're just trying to eliminate clutter. That's a lot of what our customers have asked for. Let's go take a look at how we've done that in, in lists. So lists, uh, we've moved the, uh, the filters to the top of the page and uh, just so they're easier to access. And we've made them collapsible. A lot of you have a lot of filters on your lists, and you can close it now, and, um, and you'll, see, you'll see more of the data. You can roll over and get... Uh, a quick view as you could before. And now let's take a look at records. So here's a, uh, a, a new NetSuite record. Uh, we have a great new header that makes it easier to see the information. Everything is tablet friendly. Buttons are bigger. The information is spread out more. Again, you can see progressive disclosure. The icons only show up as you roll over fields. Uh, and, and, so, and we've also changed the layout of the fields uh, with the labels on top. We found that people like that better, uh, uh, makes it more usable. The, uh, what used to be tabs now, or I'd call them subsections, so we've changed the look and feel there. And we've, again, on the sub list, made buttons bigger, uh, made them easier to use. All of this is going to work better on uh, both your desktop and your iPad or Android tablet. Save the record, and we get a nice bold uh, confirmation that the record saved. So that's just a little uh, bit of the NetSuite UI, and um, here's the, uh, the dashboard again. And you're going to get all of this um, in the next few months. So don't wait until it's in your account to learn about it, please. Um, yep, OK, good. Yeah, it's coming. 14.2, use release preview. You can get a live demo at Sweet Labs Live. There's going to be a webinar next month uh, about, for more information. I highly, highly encourage you to use Release Preview. Um, you know, we work really, really hard to make all our releases smooth, and we will do everything uh, that we've done in the past on, on this release and more. But it is a lot of change. Um, if any of you have sort of gone off the reservation and you know who you are, and you've written scripts that maybe manipulate HTML directly, you're going to want to make sure that those work in the new UI. So please use Release Preview to test it. This is really just the beginning. I mean, this is the culmination of, uh, you know, during the time that I kept showing it to you and it wasn't there yet, um, we were actually doing a ton of user testing. And um, we've learned a huge amount, more than we could deliver in one release. So future releases are going to deliver, deliver work lists that I've showed. Um, it, we're going to really focus on customizing the, the app for your various roles and various industries. We're going to streamline workflows. Uh, we're going to uh, improve the, and make easier the customization and personalization. We're going to have detail on demand, even better uh, responsiveness on, on tablets and other devices. We're going, to make it, uh, we're going to make it faster. We're always going to work on performance. So every year, at Sweet World, I'm going to show you some great new uh, user experience enhancements. This is just the beginning. 
So beyond your desktop, uh, we're looking at very, very closely at mobile devices and the increasing use of mobile devices. And we've uh, worked really hard on NetSuite for iPhone. We're on our third major version. Uh, the most recent version adds support for custom records, so uh, custom applications can work on the iPhone. Um, we have uh, full dashboard and calendar support. We've greatly improved the time and entry, uh, time entry and expense entry. You saw that yesterday in the PSA demo uh, that Zach showed. Uh, and we have more coming in NetSuite for iPhone. We're going to have push notifications, uh, immediate information on what's changing, what you need to know. Um, and we're going to do for, for sales reps automatic phone call logging, uh, just make it easier to get that information in Net NetSuite. So that's great for all you iPhone users. There might be a few of you out there that use another type of phone. Um, I've heard there's another one. I see people occasionally using these unfamiliar phones. They, so apparently there's another type of phone, and it's, uh, it's Android. And uh, you know we know the explosion of Android, especially internationally. And so we're working hard on, on NetSuite uh, for Android. And this is not just a port of NetSuite for iPhone. We're really going to take advantage of the unique features of Android. It's going to look and feel like a, a native Android application. It is going to be a native Android application. And we're going to actually have features that are first um, on Android, just to annoy Apple. And uh, so take a look at that for in early 2015. Um, we're going to start with uh, time and expense management like we showed uh, yesterday on the iPhone, and we're going to build out the uh, entire suite uh, within the, uh, the Android application. Finally, tablets. I talked a little bit about this in the, in the, in the demo. We understand that people are increasingly use, using these to access NetSuite. You're going to find that the 2014.2 release behaves much, much better on tablets, much easier to use, uh, easier to point at things and actually hit the, hit the right target. Um, but we're looking, uh, you know, at deeper changes to really make sure that NetSuite works uh, great on that device, on those devices. And this is Android tablets and uh, iPhone, uh, iOS tablets, and even maybe uh, Windows tablets. So in last year's keynote, uh, we showed a great partner app called Tribe HR. Well, we liked the demo so much. Joseph did such a great job that we bought the company. And um, so this year, we're going to show uh, the work we've done uh, with the Tribe HR team uh, on integrating Tribe HR with NetSuite. And I think what you're going to see is the power of integrating HCM with ERP uh, that improves both applications. Let's uh, take a look at the demo. So this is Tribe HR working inside of NetSuite. Uh, we can see some portlets. These are native NetSuite portlets showing us uh, recruiting information, headcount information. Here's our reviews in progress. We can take a look and see. There might be some reviews that we're a little behind on. Let's take a look at the review for Javier. So this review is a document that's automatically populated with information both from NetSuite and from the social HR system. So we have things like kudos and notes and goals. Um, we can actually take a look uh, at the goals, and some of those are from the HCM system, but some of these goals, like our Q1 personal sales target, this is actually populated from NetSuite. We have a, a sales target and our sales actuals uh, pulled in from uh, the CRM component of NetSuite. Looks like Javier is doing pretty well there. We have skills that can be pulled in uh, from NetSuite and surveys that may be done. So again, mixing and matching the data uh, within one screen. Here's Javier's uh, actual employee record. So we have the standard HR information stored in Tribe HR, including employee history, so we can see all the changes that have been made uh, over time and the history of that employee. But again, integrating the ERP and CRM information, here are key accounts pulled out of NetSuite. So this is what Javier is responsible for. Um, we can also see uh, kudos and goals. We could even look at um, Javier's active goals. And again, one of Javier's active goals is uh, his personal sales target. That's pulled out of NetSuite. Looks like he's doing great. But let's take a look at how the whole team is doing. And again, we're going to show integrating the HCM, CRM, ERP information. Here's a scatter plot that shows sales performance versus leadership, kudos uh, versus attainment. Up in the upper right, people are doing great. Down in the bottom left, 
sure enough, they're not attaining their goals and they're not uh, getting recognition from their employees. So we then maybe want to drill down on some of that information. We can look at the dashboard and get more detailed information. Uh, for example, sales quota attainment and performance rating. Again, we can see the correlation between uh, various employees. So we have an employee that has a high quota and yet has a uh, poor uh, performance rating. Obviously, that's something we want to take action on. Pulling the information together to give us uh, actionable uh, data. Here's uh, an account value uh, chart, a NetSuite portlet that shows uh, different opportunities that we have and how the rep is doing. And again, highlights uh, people that we may need to uh, focus in on. So how do we make sure this information is really rich from the social HR system? Well, employees want to be able to enter this information using any kind of device, and it's really important that we support uh, mobile devices. So from their mobile device, we have a full implementation of Tribe HR where you can see information about all the employees from the HR system. For example, we can see our sales VP. We can uh, find out where they're located. We can call them. But uh, perhaps more importantly, we actually have uh, information from the social HR system about things like kudos and company events. Uh, we can drill down on goals right there within the mobile device. Here's a, a goal. Uh, again, scroll through the activity stream, shows us various things that are happening um, in the company. Maybe we want to actually give a kudo right from our mobile device. So here's an employee, Zach Nelson. He appears to be doing quite a good job. We want to give him a little shout out. So we're going to say, yeah, thanks for the great all hands meeting that you did. And it was so good that we even got a thank you card from one of the attendees. It's great. Uh, you guys have never sent me any thank you cards. What's up with that? So we can even take a picture of the thank you card and attach it to the post and go back over to the activity stream and we'll see uh, that that kudo has been posted for everybody to see. Now again, employee engagement is the name of the game here. If we get everybody putting information into the social HR system, we can then uh, take that information and use it for insights into our business. And so uh, the bottom portlet that we have on our NetSuite dashboard for this, this is the dashboard of a chief people officer, perhaps, um, is to be able to see company value alignment. And it's, uh, can't actually see it, but I'm telling you, it's got amazing information. I mean, it's incredible. What it shows is for the different goals of the company, uh, how, kudos and attainment towards those goals, again, to be able to see that we're on track as a company. And the best way to do that is with an integrated HCM ERP and CRM system. So I strongly encourage you to take a look at Tribe HR if you haven't already. We have a, a bunch of uh, customers that have already uh, integrated the solutions. And you know we've, we're continuing to work hard to make sure the solutions work really well together. The team in Waterloo who uh, works on Tribe HR is also working on enhancing NetSuite's built-in uh, HR capabilities. So modern companies Want, okay, great, yeah, thanks. Great. I, I got my plants up here in the front of the, of the audience and they're gonna clap for everything, so it's gonna make the uh, presentation about 10 minutes longer, but it's worth it. Uh, so, uh, you know, all modern companies want to be able to scale and they want great performance. And, uh, you know, that's what we're spending an increasing amount of time in the NetSuite product team. So. Uh, one of the areas that people are concerned about is reporting and searches. So and, uh, we've made reporting and searches more robust, faster. We're allowing bigger reports, bigger searches, uh, 500K, ro 500K rows in 14.1, 5 million rows for search in 14.2. So uh, we're going to be able to scale with you. Um, web services growth is exploding as you're bringing more and more data into NetSuite. Um, so even though it's getting, uh, you know, we have to deal with the increased volume, and I hear that Again, this is one of those exponential graphs that my data center team shows me all the time. Uh, yes, you're doing a good job. Okay, I get it. Um, but we've also, even in, in, in the face of that increasing usage, we've been able to make web services 12% uh, faster in the most recent release. Finally, Sandbox. More and more, users, uh, more, and more customers are using Sandbox. And uh, we just made multi-Sandbox refresh uh, three times faster for customers. So again, you, know, you want to test your uh, customizations as you adapt NetSuite to your, to your changing business and, and we're going to make net, uh, the sandbox uh, capability even better and better to do that over time. 
Okay, so when we talk about performance, one of the most important areas of performance is uh, for SuiteScript. Whether you're developing your own suite scripts, partners are developing it, uh, or professional services during implementation, or in very, very likely you're using um, NetSuite solutions from the Suite Cloud Developer Network that are heavily using SuiteScript. So an improvement in SuiteScript performance is going to be felt by basically all of our customers. And so what I want to show today is something that's really exciting, which is SuiteScript v2, which we're going to be uh, transitioning to over uh, a number of versions. And the first uh, opportunity for you to uh, use SuiteScript v2 is going to be in the coming uh, 14.2 release. So let's uh, take a look at it. So in this uh, example that I'm about to show, we are consolidating some journals with a script. So we take in uh, information from our company and we're aggregating it into journals. And this is the old uh, suite script consolidating these journals. And um, it's going to take a little bit. So I'm going to play a little game here. Yeah, still going. I, I, I killed a few pigs, so that's good. Let's keep going. Sweet script's running. It's churning away. Going. OK, we're almost there. More, more pigs are dead. Yeah, oh, I missed that one. OK, there we go. OK, that was uh, Sweet Script version 1. Now let's take a look at Sweet Script version 2. OK, so same thing. We're going to uh, pull up our list of, of uh, data. We're going to pull it into transactions. And now I'm going to go play Angry Birds really fast. Oh, oh, shoot, I missed it. OK, well, it's a little bit faster. Uh, so that's great. Now, of course, your mileage may vary, <laughs> but that was a real that was a real test. That wasn't uh, a mock-up. That was real Sweet Script running a combination of Sweet Script doing computations and Sweet Script accessing uh, the NetSuite database. So, you know, if you're doing pure computations, this engine can actually be a hundred times faster. If you're accessing NetSuite records, you're not going to get necessarily that improvement. But you can see in a real-world example of how much this can. Uh, benefit your your applications, your uses of SuiteScript. So that's great. Coming soon, we'll be rolling it out over a couple different versions. Ultimately, all SuiteScripts will be able to run with this improved engine. So stay tuned. Next, I want to talk about business intelligence. I mean, one of the reasons I started uh, NetSuite was to get better and easier visibility into into a business. And I think we've led the industry in a lot of the innovations we've had here. Uh, dashboards. Saved searches throughout the application, giving you, you know, easy access to powerful metrics. Um, I want to share a little bit of the vision for the future of, uh, of business intelligence in, uh, in NetSuite. So the themes of our kind of strategy are fourfold. We're going to make uh, suite analytics unified, flexible, and easy, um, or optimized for you, your role, or your industry, and intelligent. I want to talk about each of these in turn. So unified data is all about bringing together, of course, all the information in our unified system, uh, the CRM, ERP, e-commerce, PSA, et cetera. But now what we're going to enhance that with is making NetSuite really a single data store uh, for your whole business. So we will go, go beyond the core NetSuite data and allow you to unify data that's outside NetSuite. So that includes um, other systems that you may have. What? You use other systems? OK, well, we'll forgive you. Um, big data that you might, ha that you might be collecting or, uh, and then want to aggregate and pull into NetSuite, or even public data. So very important that we let you build uh, your visualizations off of the complete set of data that's relevant for your business. And the way we're going to do that is with unified technology. So you've told us very, very clearly that you love saved search because of the ad hoc querying power, and you love reports, or you at least like reports, because <laughs> because of the formatting flexibility. Um, but we're going to you know, take the best of both, and we're going to improve both, and we're going to put them together, and we're going to make this all exposed to, uh, to, to the platform. Um, so you know, w when we're thinking about how this new suite analytics system is going to work, you, know, you look at BI tools. Some are super flexible, um, but they're hard to use. Some are super easy, but they can't get you the information you really need. So we're going to try you know, to do the best of both worlds and make it both easy and flexible. Simple for business users, intuitive, visual. We're going to use drag and drop. It's going to be optimized for mobile, but it's also going to be powerful. 
and we're going to have even more powerful saved search. We're going to add multi-level joins, set operations, searches of searches. Um, yep, some people out there like that for sure. Yeah, that's going to be great. And we're going to expose all that within uh, SuiteScript also. And then we're going to have the flexible uh, formatting and rich, uh, rich visual visualizations. So I want to give you um, a little hint of what this is going to look like. So this is kind of a mock-up of our new uh, search builder. You can drag and drop from a list of fields, use them as filters, or use them as uh, result fields. Drag them into the result. You immediately get a response. And then go ahead and uh, pick a filter. You know, you've seen this before in other tools. Just make it really, really easy to filter down to the data that you want to see. And um, now that we've built it in PowerPoint, it should be easy. Get it in the product. Simple matter of programming. Just copy and paste. Um, but once you're done creating your, uh, your query and, and taking a look at it within that tool, you'll actually be able to build up very uh, rich reports, full flexibility to, report, to, to format the report the way you want it, embedding uh, various charts and, visual, and visuals. All of this is going to be tablet ready. You know, that's kind of a theme. You know, we know that increasingly, especially executives, are going to be using tablets to access th this information. They should be able to do this ad hoc uh, reporting directly on their mobile device. Um, really key for making this work for you is that we understand that you can be a variety of different roles. You can be a variety of different industries. So what a, uh, a web store manager as a retail might want to look at, which is you know conversion funnel, sales by product category, returns, et cetera, it's really different from what a purchasing manager at a manufacturer might want to look at. Um, raw materials inventory, on-time POs, et cetera. And finally, a revenue manager, a software company, completely different. Uh, monthly recurring revenue, churn, payback, et cetera. So optimizing this for your role in your industry is a critical part of our vision. Finally, we really want to embed BI into your workflows. You shouldn't have to go to a separate place just to get business intelligence. We've already really pioneered some of this with our customer dashboard, our project dashboard, ex accessible right from the record. Right within the record, right where you do your work, we're going to put in things like customer satisfaction and lifetime value right inside the customer record. And finally, we're going to give increasing tools for visual discovery. Um, you saw a little bit of this in the Tribe HR demo. So, you know, giving you the type of visualization that will best work for you and making it really easy for you cho to choose different types of a visualization by dragging and dropping. Beyond the intelligence that we can glean from your data, there's more intelligence that can glean from the big data that NetSuite stores about all companies and a huge number of industries, a huge number of geographies. Wouldn't it be great if you could, when you're looking at your KPIs, not only see how you're doing relative, relative to your target, but how you're doing relative to other companies like yours, companies that may be in a similar industry, companies that may be in a similar geography, companies that may be a similar size. This will all be opt-in, um, but we're really excited, again, to give you uh, better, better data about, about your company, help you run your business better. And finally, uh, this is a cause that's been near and dear to my heart, or, and we're really starting to drill down on what it means. This is intelligence, intelligent assistance and automation. So not just showing you what has happened, but maybe predict what might happen in the future, what you might want to do about it. And in some cases, with your guidelines, actually do it. So project demand and supply of inventory, and perhaps even reorder inventory automatically. Recommend training plans for employees. Determine optimal pricing, et cetera. I mean, this is really what we want these systems to be able to do, and we're thinking about it really hard at NetSuite. We're prototyping, we're implementing, and you're going to see this coming out um, in future releases. So it takes a village. We know that we can't build all of BI ourselves, and it takes some incredible partners to have their approach to, uh, to business intelligence. So what I want to do to show you uh, the software revenue manager dashboard that I demoed a second ago is introduce Brad Peters, founder and chief product officer of Burst. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Evan. Appreciate it. I'm uh, really excited to be here today to talk to you all about business analytics. Um, if you think about it, NetSuite is a treasure trove of your business data. 
it's kind of like a flight recorder that tracks and manages and monitors huge amounts of your business activities on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, most organizations that, that want to leverage this data uh, think about and start with what we call operational reporting. And that's looking at activities uh, that have actually happened and maybe summing or counting or listing individual objects uh, in, in your application to create a historical report. Well, business analytics has a different goal. It's about creating history, making history. It's about looking across all the different data elements across an entire business process and bringing them together to make forward-looking business decisions to drive uh, increased performance throughout your business. Business analytics has the power to systematically improve any business process in your organization. And the best-run organizations are the ones that leverage analytics to empower their employees to be more effective and more effective than their competitors. I'll issue this challenge. Would you rather hire 10% more, more employees in your organization to get a better goal or to make your existing employees 10% more effective? That's the power of business analytics. So I would say one thing simply. Applications help you operate your business. Analytics help you manage your business. And the great thing about business analytics is that a picture is worth a thousand words. So uh, with that said, let's roll a quick demo to show you an example of business analytics for recurring revenue businesses. So right here, I'm looking at a dashboard that a CTO or CFO or, or manager of a, of a business would be interested in high level KPIs, green ones being good, yellow ones not so good. Here I see my corporate magic number 1.03, which is bookings divided by customer acquisition costs. That's actually pretty good across my org. I see uh, my churn year to date is 10%. It's below uh, my target of 15, so that's good. Revenue is increasing. That's, that's also pretty good. But I see up here there's a, a yellow 13, which means I, my payback period is 13 months. That's something I want to probably keep an eye out for because that's a little higher than, than uh, that I'd be interested in seeing. Now, one of the great things about analytics is it allows you to slice and dice all these great metrics across a variety of business dimensions, including geography. So if you look here at the map on the lower left, you can see that some regions are green, some yellow, and some red. Green, like the West, is, are regions that are performing pretty well in terms of magic number. Uh, regions like the Southeast, 0 0.7, not so good. It's below, below 1 and well below 1. So I probably want to drill into that to understand the performance and see, see what might be going on be behind the scenes there. And when I drill into the magic number dashboard, I actually get to see the breakdowns of what composes that number. I can see bookings, which contribute to the top line, and customer acquisition costs, which contribute to the, the bottom line here. And I can see it actually broken down by segment. So here in this case, my corporate segment is actually uh, well short of my bookings target, which is indicated uh, by the yellow line at the top. Um, but if you actually look below, my customer acquisition costs in that corporate segment are actually right on target. So I'm spending the money, but I'm not actually getting the value for that, that, that spend that I would ex anticipate. So what I'd probably want to do then is drill even further into region, into segment, to get a sense of uh, why that, those bookings may not be where I want them to be. So drilling into the revenue for that segment, I get to see now the sales performance for that particular area. And I can see in this case, my average sales cycle time is 167 days. That's a little bit long. And what's really interesting, in looking at the historical performance graph there, that moving from stage three qualified opportunity to four uh, shortlist is actually taking 86 days. That's, that's a long time. I probably wouldn't have recognized that otherwise. Here I can also see the distribution of opportunities in my sales funnel, see where my, my opportunities are sitting. And I can even project forward, based on historical conversion rates of opportunities at different stages, what my revenue is likely to be this quarter. In this case, 3.5 million, which is below both what my reps are forecasting and my quota. So that's, that's not so great. Now, if I look in the lower right, I get to see that I lose about, in this particular segment, about half of my deals to no decision. That's not a great thing. But if I drill in on that stage three uh, area right there that looks like it's, it might be a, a bottleneck, I can actually quickly see that I'm actually losing about 90% of the deals in that particular stage to no decision. And that tells me from a high level indication on the first dashboard, I was able to navigate down to see a very specific issue where I might want to invest in sales training to help my sales organization better sell value and create compelling events to move that sales cycle along further. Now this is just one example of where business analytics can be used across an entire business process to improve performance. So, uh, as in honor of Sweet World, um, I'd like to take the opportunity today to make a special offer to uh, NetSuite's customers. Uh, Burst, as of today, is making a special offer. We're, we're uh, allowing any NetSuite customer to have access to a free license to Burst's NetSuite Express Edition. This is a uh, 
intro edition to Burst. It has a little bit more limited functionality, uh, and it's designed for users that have all data access. But it allows executives to look at any business process that's in NetSuite, like Book to Bill, analyze the data that's there, drill into the data, ask further questions about that data, and maybe visualize the results. So for those folks who are interested, please stop by our booth, number 205 in the, uh, in the expo behind us, and, uh, and have a great show. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. So. Great. Well, it sounds like you're all going to have an opportunity to try uh, Burst's great technology. Next area I want to talk about is flexibility built in, an area very uh, close to my heart. Uh, you know, one of the earliest things that I worked on at NetSuite was uh, building in customization. And to succeed in your business, you really need a system that's flexible enough to adapt to your unique, unique needs that you have when you first implement, but more importantly, as your business transforms over the years that you use NetSuite and the future needs that you don't even know about. So we designed and built NetSuite from the ground up to be the most flexible business system in the world. First up, I want to talk about the flexibility in uh, the open air product. So um, it, Zach mentioned yesterday, uh, we continue to invest heavily in open air. And uh, we have a great team uh, for that solution, a standalone PSA solution. And uh, we recently added some powerful new uh, customization features that I'm going to show you now. Let's take a look. So first up, we have scripting within open air. So you can see uh, what we have there. We finally encode. Now I'm comfortable. <laughs> All that business stuff is getting me confused. Um, so this is uh, JavaScript. It's industry standard JavaScript, just like in, um, just like in uh, NetSuite. And uh, we're going to use this script to actually allow us to create a PO directly from a project. So we've added some custom fields uh, to the project uh, record within OpenAir. And uh, if we go and take a look at these uh, custom fields, we're going to enter uh, information about the PO that we that we want to create. So it's a quick PO, put in a, the customer PO number, and then the amount of the PO. Click create customer PO, save the record, and that's going to run the script uh, to create the purchase order. Now when we look at this record and we go to the PO section, we'll see the $15,000 PO uh, that we just created. Let's go uh, take a look at the uh, at the script that did this. It has the information, um, including the the customer PO number. Here's the script. Uh, we use a full API, SOAP API within uh, OpenAir directly within the script to create the PO, and then we can also use the script to make changes to the record itself, to the to the project record itself, and clear out clear out some fields. So again, adapt OpenAir to your unique uses. Uh, the next thing I want to show uh, in OpenAir is what's called the uh, resource uh, demand request. So let's see if we can get to that part. I guess I was supposed to talk more. Talk amongst yourself about JavaScript. OK, here we go. This is, um, this is uh, the resource demand request. So this makes it easier for organizations that have large amounts of resources to find the resource that's appropriate for a project. In this case, we want three uh, junior JavaScript developers. And let's take a look at the detail of this uh, resource demand request. We can see three junior JavaScript developers. Let's drill down. Um, there's filters that tell us uh, what we need, besides that they're j junior JavaScript developers. Uh, we need them to have JavaScript uh, T skills, HTML skills, ERP skills. Now we're going to click search. Uh, search is going to go into the system and find the most appropriate resources for this request. And it's going to score them. So we have some that actually scored 60%. We're going to select uh, the ones that we think are appropriate for this project. Let's select uh, three of them. We're even going to indicate with a star, the resource manager can indicate the resource that they think is most appropriate for this project. And that gives the information that the, uh, that the project manager needs to staff, it, to, to staff this project. We're going to save it. And now uh, the project manager can go in and look at our proposed resource bookings. And then uh, they can just go ahead straight and book them to the project. So just make it easier for large organizations uh, to, to use the powerful resource uh, management capabilities within NetSuite OpenAir.
We've got some open air users out there. All right, I'm really excited about this. This is our, kind of our big announcement from today's presentation. Um, we're introducing something called Sweet GL. And we're taking the GL, kind of the core of your financials, which generally in financial applications, including ours, has been rigid and static. Um, you have a basic set of transactions. They have a basic set of GL impact and postings that those transactions do. Uh, they have a limited set of, of dimensions. And everything ends up in a journal entry. You know, you look at a report, it's just journal entry after journal entry. Well, so we're going to take this rigid and static GL and we're going to make it unique and dynamic for your business. Flexible in a way that no general ledger has been before. You can now tailor the GL to your specific accounting rules, processes, and needs. Partners can create better solutions. We'll see an improvement in existing solutions. We're going to see great new solutions built on this technology. So Sweet GL has three parts. Custom segments, custom lines, custom transactions. Let's talk about each of those. So as you know, the segments that you use typically in NetSuite are department, class, location, subsidiary. Um, we're going to now allow you to extend those uh, with unlimited segments. And these segments are really, I'd call them custom fields on steroids. They take all the power that already exists in custom fields and extends them with the ability to be hierarchical, the ability to be self-balancing, the ability to do validation, the ability to source one from the other. Um, and so we think that there's a bunch of use cases for this. There's fund accounting. There's a, there's a ton more use cases that people are going to do. We'll see what you do with it. And uh, it's going to be available uh, next year in, Suite, Suite, in NetSuite in 2015. So good. Yeah, some people want that. You'll get it. Custom GL lines. So we have sort of fixed postings that we do in our existing transactions. But there's a lot of use cases where you have country or specific treatments that you need. So now with custom GL lines, you can add GL impact to an existing transaction in the primary book. If you're using multi-book, in the subsidiary book, you can actually completely transform uh, the postings for that subsidiary book. And I'm going to show a demo of this now so you can see how it works. So here we have an invoice. And um, we're going to look at the GL impact of a standard invoice. So it has standard accounts receivable sales and tax. But perhaps in a particular country, say Brazil, you actually need tax to be treated differently. And you have to, you have to add some posting lines. Let's see how we'll do that. We're going to do that with a plugin. That's how custom GL lines are implemented. You develop a plugin in SuiteScript. Here's the plugin for uh, tax expenses on accruals. It's a script. And we can actually manage it uh, to turn it on. So now we're going to turn on the plugin and say we want to do this additional GL posting on certain transactions. And once we've turned it on, we can go ahead, copy that invoice. And now the plugin is going to kick in and it's going to add our custom GL lines. We're going to save the transaction. And then we're going to take a look at the uh, GL impact. And we'll see the custom GL lines. Wait for it. Trying to make this really dramatic. There they are. There's five lines now. And so these additional lines have been added by the plugin um, in addition to the standard lines. And you can see that they affect different accounts, different amounts. Uh, but most importantly, you can see on the right side that we've audited what plugin added these lines. Uh, so you can always follow and audit the information that's changed from custom GL lines. So we expect we're going to see some really interesting uses of this technology. And this technology is coming in the next release in 2014.2. Great. So finally, this is a feature I've worked directly on. I'm really excited about it. This is um, custom transaction types. It allows you to define entirely new transaction types. It's really marrying the power of custom records with GL transactions. So this um, allows you to specify uh, the name, of course, of the transaction, the numbering scheme. It will be numbered within its own, um, within its own set. Uh, the permissions on this transaction, the statuses on this transaction, et cetera. I'll show you in a second. We can only start to imagine the uses that we're going to have for this. But fundamentally, how it's going to change the GL is you're not going to be looking at a flat list 
of journal entries and trying to figure out what they all mean. You'll be looking at true business transactions that tell you the purpose of those entries. Um, what I'm going to show in this demo is one particular use case, vendor bill accrual. At the end of uh, uh, the quarter or the month, uh, you may want to take your unapproved vendor bills and produce transactions. In the past, you might have created uh, you might have created journal entries for this. Well, now you're going to create a custom transaction type. So let's take a look at uh, creating custom transaction types. So right next to custom records, we actually have transaction types. We can see the different transaction types that we have. Debit, memo, fixed asset depreciation. Here's the vendor bill accrual. Let's take a look at that custom transaction type. This is my fault. I asked them to add a pause. <laughs> So here's the vendor bill accrual transaction. It has a name. Um, it has fields. It has, uh, it has num its own set of numbering. It has its own set of statuses. You can put it into the UI wherever you want, just like custom records. Uh, you can create custom forms specifically for this transaction type, and you can apply permissions to, uh, to indicate who should be able to see and modify these transactions. Now, in this, uh, in this case, we've actually created a suite lid that's going to create these transactions at the end of the month. So we're going to see the vendor bills that we want to consolidate. We mark them all and save. And this is going to create the vendor bill accrual transaction. Let's take a look at it. This is a new transaction type, vendor bill accrual, but it looks like other transactions, has the postings down at the bottom, has its own numbers, numbering scheme, et cetera. Now, here's where I think you really see the benefit. Now, when you look at reports, you're not going to see a mass of journal entries. You're going to see what those transactions really are. In this case, we've highlighted the vendor bill transactions. They're sort of complete uh, citizens of the transaction space to live alongside all your standard transactions. We think we're going to see some amazing uses of this technology uh, by Sweet Cloud developer uh, network partners as well as, cu uh, as customers and NetSuite professional services. So please take a look at this. Uh, it's available in uh, version 2015.1. Uh, part of our customization capabilities that I'm really fond of, again, another area that I worked on, is um, SuiteFlow. And we've seen great adoption of SuiteFlow uh, over the past few years. And we've gone and talked to SuiteFlow users and found what they want us to do to make it easier to use, easier to adopt. So today I'm going to show some great new enhancements we have to SuiteFlow, SuiteFlow templates, and the 2D editor. Let's take a look. So we have a we're going to have, in a coming version, built-in set of workflow templates. And uh, we can see a variety of templates here. We have simple approval, multi-level approval. They're actually categorized uh, by the type. Um, we're looking at, you can look at CRM templates, ERP templates. Here's a sales order approval. And uh, it gives you a little bit of information. When you select that template, it's going to bring it right into the workflow editor for you to modify for your needs. Let's take a look at the new workflow editor. Um, so we've actually continued with a two-pane approach, but the focus now is on the diagram. This workflow is a sales order approval workflow, it has multi-level approvals, tests if the total's over $10,000, um, and if it's approved, it moves into a sales order approval end state. Um, the other panel that we have um, in the new workflow editor is the uh, workflow detail panel. Um, on the right, you do most of your work on the left, but on the right, you can see information about the objects you've chosen uh, on the left. So you can see workflow information, um, as well as you know, when you're actually working within the diagram. You can see the diagram as a start state and an end state. Uh, it makes it a lot clearer how the workflow is operating. And you can actually click on objects in the diagram, and then on the workflow panel, it will give you information. In the case of uh, you can single click to see information on the panel on a state, or you can double click and bring up the standard information that we've had before. Uh, within, you can, uh, select, uh, you can select transitions also. You can see information about uh, fields on the different states, and you can see the actions and the trigger types. Now this is all collapsible, so we've grouped the trigger types um, into a variety of categories to make it easier to work with. 
We're really focused on get, making it easier to use, easier to see the, the information you need, easier to work with the different components. Okay, here's the coolest part. No longer do you need a linear diagram. So you can build the diagram to really show you how, you know, in the best way how you want to visualize the workflow, make it as easy as possible to work with. Drag and drop the states to different places. Very cool. Create a new state. Uh, all you have to do is click on new state, drag it to where you want it to go. You can double click on the state, and we'll give it the state a name. In this case, we want to add uh, additional notification step to the workflow. So we'll give it a name, additional notifications. Save it. Now we'll want to create a transition to that state. That's real easy. You start uh, with the start state, drag it over to the end state. Voila, there's our transition. And then finally, we'll want to add new actions to that state. We can do it straight from the workflow panel, add an email action, for example. It'll show up uh, in the list of actions. And this is similar to other things we're doing in the UI. We're working on progressive disclosure. So you just roll over to see some of the operations rather than showing them to you on all lines all the time. This is how you would edit the state. And uh, we, we are really excited about this uh, new UI. We've tested it with users, but it's, it's coming in. 14.2, uh, so please use it on your workflows and continue to use workflows to uh, do the best you can to automate your business. Here's something that is kind of cool. This was developed by somebody in our Suite Cloud Developer Network team. Um, this is a script queue monitor. We know that a lot of you are running a bunch of scripts and uh, this is actually this solution was actually built on the platform, but as, as you have to uh, manage more and more scripts, it gets it's harder to manage the queues, and so the first thing that we've added is the ability to actually visualize uh, what's happening in the various script queues, so you can make modifications and make sure that you're balancing your load. On the right, uh, there's a visual timeline of how the scripts have been running. Again, so you can uh, troubleshoot and make sure that you're getting the best possible performance out of the system. So this will be coming soon to all of you that are, are running lots and lots of suite scripts. And as the operations team tells me all the time, there's a bunch of you out there. So one of the things I'm most gratified about uh, the increase in the size of the team and the more resources that we've had is we've been able to dig in on some really hard problems that take years to solve. And some of the stuff you've seen today uh, for example, the, the new uh, user experience, some of the things you're gonna see later in this presentation, they've really been years in the making. So here's one that we think is gonna greatly help developing suite apps. This is the uh, suite app development framework. So the current methodology for developing uh, suite apps is that you create customizations um, in a NetSuite account. And then you create SuiteScript in an IDE, and then you move the SuiteScript back into NetSuite, and the definition is actually stored in NetSuite. Well, what we've found by talking to teams that are developing suite apps is that they want development to work more like it does in other types of application development frameworks, where you can work entirely in the IDE, you can store your definitions in a source code control system, you can have multiple people working and merging changes. So um, that's what we're gonna pioneer with the new suite app development framework. So in the new methodology for developing suite apps is going to start with working in the IDE. So develop the suite app definition lives entirely in code, lives entirely in the IDE. You'll then be able to deploy it for testing to a NetSuite account. But again, because the definition lives entirely in the IDE, it can be stored in a traditional source code control system. And this makes team development a lot easier. Uh, you can merge changes, you can use your source code control system's uh, merge capabilities. So, uh, you, and then you can, you can actually, you can still work in NetSuite to define your custom records and you just export them into the IDE uh, to, to work with them with this new methodology. Let's take a look at this new methodology, methodology in action. So here we're looking at the Suite Cloud IDE and we want to create a Suite app. What do we do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is create a custom record. And now you create a custom record in code. So you say, I want to create a custom record file type. I'm going to give my file type a name. It's automatically going to fill out the code for this custom record, which is XML. 
And so we can modify the XML to give, again, I'm in code. This is great. I'm so comfortable. Let's just keep this going for like another hour. Um, uh, we make changes. We add a field. This is a field of our customer record. It's a feedback record. We want to have a star rating as one of our fields. There we've completed the initial definition of this record. Now we want to add some logic to this record. So we're going to add a user event script. Again, this is what you can do today. We're going to create a script file. It's going to pre-fill it um, with our user event function. And then we'll add the body of the function uh, to, do the, to perform the actual operations. And uh, we're going to do some validation of the star rating. And then we're going to now, uh, this is new, you're going to create a script record directly in code with XML. So this is the script record file. And we have to give uh, the script record a name, an ID. Um, in this, we actually um, have to associate the script file that we just wrote. And we can do that with auto completion in the IDE. Click on the script file field. Gives us the files that we've created. We add that one in. We also have to also create a deployment. So again, we're going to edit this text file, give the deployment an ID, give the deployment um, a record type. It's the feedback record. Uh, give the deployment a title. And we're done. That's a complete, albeit very simple, suite app. What do we do next? We need to deploy it and test it. So we go to the NetSuite menu. We say deploy the suite app. It's now going to take those definitions, definitions, push them into your NetSuite account where you can test them. And there we can see the result. We have a brand new feedback record in NetSuite. So this is the future of developing suite apps. We think it brings us uh, to, the, to, to the latest and greatest development methodologies. And we know we'll see some even better suite apps as a result of these capabilities. All right, now it's time for the awards. First, I want to bring an update. So the Eurosuite Award is about the customer with the best, most innovative uses of the platform. I want to talk a little bit about last year's award. It was given to Headland Machinery in Australia. Um, they used Suite Cloud to develop a great field services app. It was so great that they spun off a company for it called Klugo, and they offer their Suite app called Next Service. It's here at the Expo. So go check it out. It offers automatic scheduling, mobile app, um, for field service, and um, uh, that shows that if you can develop a great suite app, soon you could be the come next great tech entrepreneur. So congratulations to Headland Machinery and Klugo. So let's talk about this, uh, the finalists for this year's award. Uh, There's another great set of submissions. We selected four uh, as nominees, ABS CBM, they're the leading TV network in the Philippines. Their challenge was that they had overseas viewers who couldn't watch shows. So their solution was a suite app that rents mobile devices with preloaded content. And they were able to manage all the subscriptions, activations, and content uh, allowed through NetSuite. And they've been able to reach a large untapped audience, ABS-CBN. Uh, so ADP, uh, is Advanced MD. Their healthcare IT, their challenge was inefficient and inconsistent sales processes. Um, they had a small number of sales reps that were making most of the sales. And so they created a, a custom Salesforce automation process called Moneyball. Step-by-step uh, -step guidance for reps, data validation, lead nurturing. Um, and it was a platform, it's really a platform for them to create other tailored processes on top of NetSuite. They improved uh, onboarding of their new reps from two weeks to 2.5 days, and their win rate increased by 30% in the first six months. So great solution on SuiteUp from Advanced MD. Next up is Clanzoid, um, industrial water treatment monitoring and consulting. Their challenge is they had a Windows 3.1 system, no integration with ERP and CRM. They had antiquated and inflexible reports for customers. Um, and so their solution is new data collection and reporting system. It's really cool. I got to see this in action a couple weeks ago. It has a mobile app. It's really, really uh, interesting how they've used this powerful new UI for their, uh, for their customers, in fact, a customer portal with which uh, they can communicate effectively. And they get these rich interactive PDF reports. It's really cool. Um, dramatic productivity increases plus happier customers was the result. Finally, a longtime uh, NetSuite customer, UCG. Uh, their challenge was they had a manual certification 
management process, which had wasted time, lost revenue, frustrated customers. They automated the recertification, certification, recertification management in NetSuite. They created also a customer portal, automatic payment tracking. This reduced customer support calls, cut churn of customers in half, increased their revenue, and, and higher productivity in a variety of functions. So another great solution that I got to see a couple weeks ago. And the winner is... I should say the winners are. It was so close, we couldn't decide. Two teams, it's a tie. Great solutions, but we are uh, giving this year's Your Suite Award to Clenzoid and UCG. I'd like to invite Michael Cairns of Clenzoid and Phil Cutler of UCG up to the stage to get their award. There you go. Oh, wrong crystal. Sorry. <laughs> the other crystal. go. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks, Phil. Let's take a, take a picture. All right, I'll get in the middle. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Congratulations. And uh, I left my clicker over next to the mesh. Finally, I want to talk about commerce-ready ERP, and we, it was a major theme in Zach's keynote yesterday. Every company needs to be commerce-ready. I, I hope that point was made effectively. Um, and NetSuite unites the front office and the back office, enabling you to sell more, service your customers better, and control your costs. So first thing I want to show in commerce-ready is, is a sweet commerce update, and we're going to uh, just take a look at some of the uh, advances we've made recently. Uh, we have uh, reference commerce uh, implementations for Shopflow, B2C, and B2B My Accounts, and updated checkout. And you know, I, take a look at these, see how they'll work within your website. We're really proud of the advances we've made with Sweet Commerce Advanced. Um, and we actually um, are about to show uh, B2B uh, My Account. It's consumer grade that B2B, uh, lo B2Bs love consumer grade, B2C wants enterprise grade, and uh, we're gonna bring it together with the B2B Commerce Center, which Zach mentioned yesterday, I'm gonna show in a minute. We're never satisfied with the performance of these reference implementations, we're continuing uh, to improve them with every single release. Uh, so let's look at the B2B Customer Center. So Zach showed this yesterday, this is the B2B Customer Center before. You might say a little bit drab, a little bit utilitarian, but it worked, and you know, customers have, have had some um, great results uh, with their customers. But we want to take it to the next level. So let's take a look at the new B2B customer center. So Sweet Office, they've been able to upgrade the look of their customer a little bit, uh, customer center a little bit. Automatic recommendations uh, based on past purchase history. Um, a pixel perfect look that matches their brand, and then a variety of functionality that, uh, that their users can access. For example, billing. Let's take a look at the billing section. Uh, really nice imagery of their account balance. Your customers can see how close they are to their credit limit. They can see information about their available credit, deposits, credit memos, terms. Um, you can even print a statement for detailed information. Uh, perhaps we uh, notice that we have a pretty high balance. Maybe we want to pay some of these invoices. Gives us a list of invoices. We can um, filter the invoices to recent ones. We can sort by due date or invoice number. Overdue invoices are in red. Invoices that still have a discount available are in green. Um, and then we notice there's an invoice that looks rather high. Let's take a look at that one. Why, one is, why is that one so big? Uh, we'll get a pop-up, and now we're going to drill down on the detailed invoice. Again, totally flexible layout. Ah, it was that, those pesky MacBook Pros that we bought. Those can be a little pricey. Um, but we know, yeah, we did buy that. We do have to pay this. We'll pay it, but we're still going to negotiate on the price, so maybe we're going to do a partial payment. So we'll pay $10,000 of this invoice. Save that partial payment. And then we'll make payments uh, on the rest of the invoices. It sums up our payments, and now we can proceed to the next step. 
check that our credit card information is correct, our billing address, go ahead and make the payment. And we get a thank you confirmation, we can, and we'll even get an email with, with, with the payment. So, you know, we could do this before, but not with this style. Here's a brand new capability in the, in the B2B customer center. These are lists. Allows frequent buyers to be able to rapidly get to the items that they want to buy, add them to their cart with one click. You uh, can get a, build a variety of lists, maybe for different offices that you're buying for. You can edit lists, take a look at the, uh, the elements of the list, different items. We can go to the MacBook Pro item and um, maybe we really want to keep buying 11 of them, even though we don't like paying for them. Um, we can then add that directly to the cart, or we can add the entire list directly to the cart. From there, we can uh, go to the cart or navigate back to our B2B customer center. Now, we've built this all uh, with responsive design. And so it's going to be available, completely available, 100% available on mobile devices. Different layout, uh, exact same functionality. Great, so all of you using the customer center, take a look at the reference my account in the B2B customer center um, and adapt it uh, to your needs. Uh, next year, hopefully we'll sh maybe show some, somebody will win a your suite award for their adaptation of the B2B customer center. Next up, I wanna talk about another multi-year effort that we're engaged in here at NetSuite and that's uh, unified customer experience management. So as Zach talked about yesterday, you don't just interact with your customers through leads and opportunities. You interact them through a huge variety of touch points. Retail, mobile, product fulfillment or service delivery, call center, invoice, website and web store, even social. Uh, to maximize and improve your relationship with your customers, you really need to de deliver a consistent brand and consistent message across all of these channels. But it's even more complex than that because you have different segments of customers and you want to treat them differently. You want to give a consistent message, but a different message to, for example, your enthusiastic advocates who purchase more than three times a year, or your content consumers that purchase less but are still engaged, or your promo driven purchasers who uh, only buy when you have a sale. Uh, but it's even more complex because you have sort of time-based segmenting. So recent grill purchase, for example, that could pull from any of those groups. And they may, and, and, but we want to target particular content through all the different touch points for those recent grill purchasers. So this is a vision of what unified customer experience management is going to look like. So along the left here, we have the various segments that you're marketing to. And across the top, we have, uh, these are the segments, and then across the top we have the different channels, different touch points, email, integrated digital, site, et cetera. For a particular event, Memorial Day, we're going to want to be able to take a look at, well, what is the email content that we're giving to recent purchasers? There it is. We can view and edit directly here. What's the integrated digital content? It's going to be similar. It's going to have the same messaging, but it's going to be different. We want to, again, manage it in one place. So this is the vision. And now let's take a look at our first step. So our first step is brand new site management. Uh, last year, we bought a company called Element Fusion. And uh, at the last Sweet World, I showed their Light CMS product and how you could uh, work with your site directly in line. Well, now we're taking that, those powerful capabilities and integrating them into NetSuite. Let's take a look. So this is a website for Wolf Cookware. And we can see right in line, we have a Sweet Commerce uh, a header that allows us access to uh, a lot of the tools that we're going to use. We can just roll over content, edit it in line, drag and drop, move it to where it needs to go. This is all based on a new concept of version. So when I'm editing the site, I could be editing a live site or I could be editing a site that's going to go live in the future uh, on a particular date. A Memorial Day site that's going to go live before Memorial Day, an Independence Day site. It's going to go live before July 4th. We're going to actually today be editing the Memorial Day site. All these changes that we make will not take effect until that version goes live. So one of the things we want to do is we want to create a landing page for our email marketing campaign. So we go up to the header and we click on that we want to create a new item. 
And here it is, this is a landing page. We're gonna give it a name. It's gonna automatically create a URL. And um, we're gonna make it an article. And then we can see it in action right on the left here. Save it. We can edit the content in line. We could type right in there the content, or in this case, we're gonna look for a blog post that our writers have written. Just drag it in, ready to go. Now let's take a look at the home page. And we wanna change the home page for Memorial Day. We have a brand new photograph. We're gonna pull that out of the file cabinet, drag it in, and then we're going to give it a name, and we're gonna link it to that blog content that we just created. Now we want to modify a product detail page by putting a banner. Again, all done in line. This is going to go live only in the future. Uh, we'll add the banner. We can put it on a product detail page, but we can actually automatically add it to all pages in the, in the grill category. So they, all, they know about the 20% off sale on grills. So it's never been easier to manage content inside a NetSuite. I mean, those of you that have worked with the existing tools, this is going to be coming live over the next few versions, and I'm sure all of you website content developers are going to be really excited to use it. So now that you're making so much money, let's make sure we're profitable. Um, an area, another multi-year area that we're working on is procurement. Um, making sure that you can work with your suppliers, get the best possible prices, and uh, optimize your costs. So uh, the first thing we're going to show is purchase contracts. This is just one part of a uh, multi-version effort to improve the purchasing capabilities in NetSuite. Let's take a look. So the, the uh, purchase contract record is a new record in version 14.2. Another thing we're adding is a request for quotation. And uh, so from a request for quotation, you'll actually decide who you're going to buy from. You're going to create a contract for that vendor. And you can have this contract can have a special type of dating, start date, end date. It can have a minimum amount such that you don't incur penalties. It can have a maximum amount that you want to purchase under the next contract. We're going to be constantly tracking how much you've spent, how much you've billed, how much uh, you've received under this contract. The contract is actually going to track uh, various items, the contracted items each have a pricing schedule that you can modify. And there's a variety of options how the pricing is going to be calculated by, quant by overall quantity, We're going to use marginal pricing or lot pricing. We can see in this case we have three different price tiers and this, uh, the first discount of 4% starts when we've bought 25. As we can see on this contract so far, we haven't purchased any anything. So let's go ahead and make a purchase on this contract. We also actually have terms, um, so we, if we reach a certain threshold, we can actually get an additional discount, and this will all be au calculated automatically as we enter new transactions. Let's go ahead and take a look at a transaction, a purchase order. We're gonna add an item from this contract to the purchase order. Choose the item, and we'll give it a quantity. We're gonna say 30, so we cross a pricing tier and uh, we'll give an expected receipt date. And when we add it, it's automatically calculated this price, which is a blended rate between uh, the two pricing tiers. When we save uh, this purchase order, we can go back to the purchase contract, and we could see that it's tracked this additional purchase. We have an increased purchase amount. Let's go ahead and take a look at the item itself that we purchased, and we can see that it's tracked the amount we purchased, that, and this explains why uh, the pricing that we got on that, most recent, on that most recent transaction. So we think that the purchase contract, RFQs, a lot of these features that we're adding are going to really be invaluable tools in managing purchasing uh, spend and increasing the efficiency in your company. This is just the beginning, as I've been saying on a lot of these uh, a lot of these areas. Uh, we're going to be adding blanket POs. We're going to be improving three-way matching. We're going to be adding a new vendor center that is very similar uh, to the customer center that we, that we just showed. We're going to have a procurement dashboard, and we're going to continue to improve the vendor and spend 
analytics in procurement. Finally, I want to talk about global issues, uh, tax and compliance complexity for a global company. Um, if you're a company operating in multiple countries, you already know the complexity that you have with tax, compliance, payments, and shipping. Um, for example, tax is not one size fits all. It's all different types of tax, all different types of reporting. We've covered a lot of it in NetSuite One World, but it's, you know, there's always going to be new things. Um, and and there, is par there are partners um, in a variety of regions that can help us get the best possible tax compliance. We want to be able to work effectively with those partners. Similarly in payments, it's not just Visa and MasterCard. There's hundreds of payment providers, many specific to a country or region. We've added built-in support for some of those. There's no way we can cover all of them. So there's unique payment types required in some countries, something called Ideal in the, in the Netherlands. Hito can tell us about it. And um, so all these different payment types require partners to help us support. Same thing in shipping. It's not just UPS and FedEx. Hundreds of shipping providers, again, specific to a uh, country or region. We're going to support some of them out of the box, but we need to enable partners to be able to support all of them across the globe. To do this, we're developing a series of APIs. Um, there's three new pluggable APIs that use the plug-in architecture that we showed in custom GL lines. There's a tax API to allow standardized transaction forms uh, for all countries and enable integration with any tax engine. Payment APIs for simplified integration with a variety of different alternate payment methods with a secure standard space uh, API. And finally, shipping APIs to enable shoppers to choose delivery methods and carriers, do real-time integrated shipping rate across these hundreds and hundreds of shipping providers. So these APIs are going to be fully documented, of course, and we're going to be working with uh, SDN partners to develop some of these integrations with all the different tools that you need to make uh, your, Net, your NetSuite implementation successful globally. And that wraps up the amazing new solutions um, that I want to talk about today. And uh, okay, great. Well, oh, someone's coming up on stage. Hey, you did such a great job. Yay. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that was awesome. it. Oh, thanks so much. Okay, yeah. well. A lot of work. Another successful keynote. I'm going to buy myself a modest present for oh. a job well done. Just a trinket. Something amusing. Uh, you do not need another mm, oh. fast car. No, Evan, that is not a trinket, and I am not amused. Cindy, a man's got to do what a man's got to do. Well, hello, Mr. Goldberg, Bo Magnuson. Welcome back to Magnuson Lexus of Fremont. I see you uh, brought your daughter in today. <laughs> Well, thank you. It's actually Mrs. Goldberg, but we're here to uh, overcome Evan's midlife crisis. Let's see if you can help with that. I'm just feeding the ego, Bo. Uh, the old midlife crisis. I know it well. I've had it for a long time. That's one of the reasons I got into the car business. <laughs> so many cars, so little time. Well, Evan, Cindy, let me introduce you to one of our new sales managers. Jack has some amazing new stuff he'd like to show you. Hi, the name is Flash. Jack Flash. Nice. Wow, that app you're using looks a lot like NetSuite. It is, it's built by one of your partners at Vectis who's built it on the platform. They have an end-to-end -end dealer management system just for us. Mmm, fast platform. Yes, you like that platform, don't you? Um, <laughs> Jack, let's look up Mr. Goldberg's information in our new fast system. Absolutely, in a flash. So first we'll start and look up Mr. Goldberg's customer record with our quick search functionality. Let's pull up his customer dashboard. Perfect. So Evan, it looks like you bought a Lexus RX hybrid from us before. How's that working out? Uh, actually, I drive the hybrid. Apparently, it's not fast enough for Evan. I have a need for speed. Ah, the need for speed. Well then, Mr. Goldberg, I have the perfect car for you. The Lexus supercar, the LFA. Uh -huh. It's got a V10. 4.8 liter and 552 horsepower. Zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds flat with a top speed of 202 miles an hour. Nice. How do you know that? I know so much more than you think. 
Wow, well, did you know that they only made 500 of those things? Oh, great. So if you buy one today, there'll only be 499 left. Uh, not exactly. You know Mr. Larry Ellison, don't you? I'm familiar, yeah. With yes, him. he liked his car so much, he bought 499 of them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, why did Larry buy 499 of them? Uh, because he can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I guess something about, you know, they make very nice thank you cards, so, uh, yeah. But the okay. good news is he saved one for you and uh, Zach. Wow, how is that going to work? Uh, I think you guys maybe have to carpool. Uh, but in that car, it would be more like car cooling. So. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. Sounds good. Uh, All right. Jack, in a flash, can you pull up that car and we can show it to Absolutely. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Goldberg? So let me go back to our home dashboard. Let's look at the model list we have in inventory. And let's pick the LFA over here. Mm. Ah, isn't that sweet? Or should I say, net sweet? <laughs> nice, yeah, wow. I already feel 20 years younger. I think my hair's growing back. Uh, Evan, it's a car, not a miracle. I definitely want that car. Uh, you're a tough negotiator. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, Jack. In a flash, why don't you show them the colors and options we have available on Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Let me go show you what we're going to sell you. I mean, what, we're, what we have. Um, let's look at the specifications, number one. I know safety is huge, so it's got all the standard safety and security features you're looking for. And there's the 552 horsepower engine in there that comes standard. So let me start a quick quote for you guys so we can price this out. Let's get Mr. Goldberg in there. Start the process for you to own your new car. Terrific. All your information's come in based on your previous purchase. So if you want to check that real quick, and if anything's changed, let me know. We can make edits right now. Looks good. Perfect. So now let me go ahead and configure the options for you um, so you can pick what you want in your new LFA. So it looks like you can pretty much have any color you want as long as it's white. <laughs> mm, well, I would have preferred crystal meth blue, but I guess we'll just have to use NetSuite white. All right, so let's look at some options here. We have the Nurburgring package. Easy uh, for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> which provides a little extra horsepower. Oh, because you can get so tired of 556 horses. Right? Well, it's also got a faster shift in gearbox, and it's all got a lot of racing enhancements. Uh, that would cost... Only 87000 Oh, what a deal. I actually think the normal engine is good enough. Yeah, you know, actually, maybe for you, but I also have a need for speed. I want to give Larry a run for his money. We're getting the uh, Nürburgring pack. Nice. Okay, well, then I want the extra USB port. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll get the Burger King package in for her, and we'll get you the extra USB port, which is the geek package for Evan. All right, let's install that. And great. So are you looking to drive out in your LFA today? Yes, I'll take it. You'll take it? Uh, yeah, a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. Ah, uh, you've made an excellent choice. Excellent choice. I'd love to see Mr. Ellison's face as you drive past him in your Norbring package. Oh, he <laughs> is going to be green with envy. Uh, I don't think Larry does envy. Uh, you're probably right. <laughs> all right, so we do all the installations for the Geek Package on site. So let's go ahead and create the service order so we get that to the service floor. So we'll save the quote. We'll go back to now your car, and I'm going to initiate the quick service option. The system already knows the options we have picked, so I'll tee it up for me. And all I have to do is select what we have picked out, submit it. And we're now ready to create the service order. So all the information about the car and yourselves has been defaulted in. We're going to make you priority one because you are the most important customer we have. Yeah. Commission five, boss. <laughs> <laughs> and we go down, and there it is. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and see what we have in the shop floor. Oh, boy. It is a busy morning in the shop floor. Busy. Oh, um, we have one person ahead of you in line. Who is that? Benny off. Bump, Bump him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll move Mr. Benny off a little bit. He's not going to know. He doesn't have a CRM system for that. Um, <laughs> and let's go ahead and put in Mr. Goldberg. Perfect. 
So if you guys wait a few minutes, it'll be ready. But in the meantime, do you have time to look at our mobile application? We actually have a version of our dealer package that Adve Adventus. Adventus is built for us that allows you to schedule future appointments. Oh, well, Evan, I'm. You want to look at how to schedule future appointments? Yeah, I'm the scheduler in the future. Oh, perfect. So is it easy to use? It is or? very simple. Okay, good. So the good. mobile app allows you to essentially pick dates, pick times, and configure future appointments. Let's walk through it really quickly. Great. So here's the, the dashboard. You can pick any future date. Let's pick something a couple weeks from now, about the 21st of May. Perfect. And let's get you guys in early, because I know you guys like morning appointments. So we'll get you in from the 11 to 2, 12 slot. And all you do is confirm it. And that sends the information back to our service um, providers. And they will be ready for you guys when you come in on the 21st at 11 o'clock in the morning. Okay, very as simple well, as that. Thank you. All right. Well, great. Uh, our service team over there, are they hard at work? Get your <laughs> LFA all cleaned up. And Mr. Goldberg. At Magnus and Lexus, we too like to deliver a drug-free, I mean a bug-free product. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Who is that guy? I recognize him. McGeeva? Jim McGeeva? <laughs> Jim, step away from the car. There's no way you're going to get to drive that thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like your LFA is ready, finally. Uh, so, who'd like to take it home today? Uh, I'll take it. Uh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, you can drive the hybrid home. I'm taking the LFA. This is going to be fun. She's just kidding. Congratulations, <laughs> Mr. Goldberg. I don't think she's kidding. <laughs> no, maybe not. Well, thanks, Bo. Ladies and gentlemen, Bo Magnuson of Magnuson Lexus. If you guys are in the market for a car, come see Bo. He'll give you a great deal. <laughs> um, I also want to thank Invectus uh, for a fantastic application. Uh, venue, uh, are you here? You can stand up. Thank you. Thank you, Venue. And I want to thank all of you for coming today uh, to see the future of uh, NetSuite. I hope to see all of you tonight at the party and next year at Sweet World 2015. Thank you very much. Uh, wait, wait a second, honey. Wait, don't go without me. <laughs> 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 I think nice. <laughs>